Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have brought on a man who is not a bodybuilder, but he was semi-involved in bodybuilding. Hey, maybe he is a bodybuilder. There you go. And I knew him when he was five years old, and I haven't seen him since. And you're how old now? 48. 48 years old. He was a uh, well-known figure on TV for Burger King. Jack in the Box. I mean, Jack in the Box. It's all I don't know what I said Jack in the Box. I was going to say McDonald's. <laughs> Jack in the Box. Exactly, Jack in the Box. He was all over TV, all over the place, and posters and billboards and commercials and whatever for how many years was that? It ran wow. a long time. It, actually, it ran for 16 years. 16 years. Yep, 16 years. The man is a millionaire. <laughs> and I'm really proud that we found each other. I'm really happy to have Rodney Allen Rippey. Now, a lot of you older people know the name very well. A lot of you younger people don't even know who the Beach Boys are. That's right. It's true. That's true. 25 years. What? But that's not <laughs> It's not a fault. It's just they weren't around. They, and they missed a lot of good they music. They missed a lot of good stuff. Yeah. But anyway, we found each other, and I thought it'd be fun to talk about what he's been doing with himself. And um, his introduction to bodybuilding at five years old was sitting on my arm and Don Peter's arm on a show called, I think it was called The Shape of Things with Brenda Vaccaro on CBS Channel 2. That's right. I have a good memory. I just and didn't remember Jack in the Box. There you go. <laughs> How can I forget that? There you go. So um, we touched base and we decided to do a show and talk about what he's doing now because it's been a long time and he's an interesting man and we'll see where it goes from there. That's it. What got you into, because a lot of my viewers are in fitness and they're into modeling and, mm -hmm. and acting and all that, what got you into doing commercials with your parents? You know, I, I was born in Long Beach, California. Yeah. And it was just one afternoon. I was sitting there, a little kid, three years old, and watching the Little Rascals. Mm -hmm. And I'm cracking up laughing, and my mom's in the kitchen, and she's doing, I think she's washing dishes. And so she comes in, and she says, what's so funny? And I'm like, I pointed to TV. She goes, oh, you're laughing at buckwheat. And I nod, and so she's like, what, you think you could do that? And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, Rodney, Buckwheat's been around a long time. Yeah. And I'm like, no, Mom, you know, Buckwheat's little like me. And so she's like, no, 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 Buckwheat's been around a long time. So she started telling me the history of the Little Rascals. One thing leads to another. She goes, wait a minute. You wouldn't be afraid to be on TV and all the cameras and lights? And I'm like, nope. So my mom is one to call your bluff. So she goes over and picks up the Yellow Pages, 1972. Before Internet. Before the Internet. Rotary phone, yeah, literally opens the yellow pages and starts dialing rotary dialing numbers, and there was a listing <clears throat> for talent agents, and so my mom said, you know, I got a cute little son, I think he's got what it takes, and after a few calls, we got linked up with the top agent. Who was it at the time? Dorothy Day Otis. Oh yeah, sure, of course she handled kids. That's right. She yeah. was a top. Top, top uh, agent for children. Yeah. And so she signed me, my sister Beverly Lee, and my brother Kenneth Wayne. And um, we were all in. And so actually my sister Beverly Lee hit the first commercial in the family. She did a Banquets Fried Chicken commercial back in the day. And so my brother, he went out for the audition for the old Coca-Cola commercial. Mm -hmm. I like to teach the world to sing. Oh, sure. That's Big, huge. huge. And... Huge. I'm the, you know, the littlest one of the bunch, and I'm the baby of the bunch, and yeah. so I was kind of bummed, and my mom said, don't worry, you'll get a call, and then one day Dorothy called, and she goes, Flossie, we got an interview for Rodney, it's for Jack in a Box, it's a huge cattle call, just take him in. Wait, stop. Yeah. For a cattle call, which a lot of people don't know, we know, yeah. could be 200 kids there, right. easily. Yeah. And they go through them, and they're all with their parents, and the waiting room is, a, is an erotic mother's. Yeah. Screaming and yelling and want their kid on next, and mm -hmm. it's just a waiting game. And then you wait a couple of hours, and you're seen, and you'd go in and say, I'm Rodney Allen Rippey. Thank you very much. See you. Bye. And yeah. then you get a call back. That's right. Hey, boy, he's got it down. So <laughs> I, I get called in, and so, well, we get there. And first of all, as soon as we walk in, my mom looks around, and she goes, oh, look at all these cute kids. I mean, it's girls with pigtails and little boys with bow ties and yep. he, I mean, you na every nationality. And my mom is just like, it, not that she's doubting me. She's like, gosh, you, your very first audition, it had to be a big one like yeah. this. So yeah. my mom says, hey, just do your best. So we're sitting there, we've signed in. And my mom says, uh, Rodney, I smell food. I'm like, okay. And she's like, 
I think they're going to give you food. She said, remember the manners I taught you. Don't put your elbows on the table. Don't talk with your mouth full. Remember that. And just, uh, and don't touch it. If they, I don't care what they put in front of you. Don't touch it until they say go. So I'm like, okay, I got it. So my mom, they finally call my number. We go to the door. We walk in. And my, well, actually, my mom walks me to the door and she says, I can't go any farther. This is it. Yeah. I'm my first audition. You're on your own. No formal training. Yeah. She wasn't from the industry. And she was just like, <sighs> gives me a kiss on the cheek, opens the door, and pushes me in. And it, I'm inside now. Right. And, so, and actually, I walk in, and believe it or not, they have like a couple apple boxes, a table. And on the, on the sound stage, this lady is literally grilling up. Jumbo Jacks for every kid. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, mom is right. Yeah. So I get this burger, they put it in front of me, and I'm like, don't touch it, don't touch it. Finally, the guy says, um, turn the camera on, and that's casting. And he says, uh, hey, haven't I seen you on TV before? And I said, yeah, lying. Of course. And he goes, what's your name? Rodney? Rodney what? Rodney Allen Rippey. He goes, what's that in front of you? I go, the Jumbo Jack from Jack in a Box. And he goes, do you think you could ever get a bite out of it? And I said, it's too big to eat. And he said, well, pick it up and take a bite. And I was like, oh, there's my green light. Oh, boy. So I said, I'm thinking to myself as a kid, I might only get one bite. So I take this huge bite. And he goes, tell me how you like it. And I go, I can't talk my mouth full. And he dies laughing. I mean, just practically rolls off the couch laughing. And he's like, oh, you can go. You can go. And I'm like, chewing. He's like, oh, you can go. So I walk out, literally chewing. Yeah. And as soon as I grab the handle and go out the door, my mom sees the casting guy just dying laughing, rolling off the couch. And my mom's like, oh, my God, they laughed him out of here. So my mom just calmly grabs my hand and whisks me out the door. She goes, what happened? Why was he laughing at you like that? I said, mama, he gave me a burger. I took a bite. He asked me how I liked it. I said, I can't talk my mouth full. He cracked up laughing. And that, was, that was the selling point. And my mom was like, oh, let's go. She's like, all the way from L.A. back to Long Beach. She's like, was it a good laugh or a bad laugh? And I'm sitting in the back seat of the car, and I'm like, mommy just laughed. And my mom was like, oh. My mom kind of felt hurt yeah. that he laughed at me. So my mom was like, oh. So we get back to Long Beach, and I'm like, can I go play? And she's like, yeah, go play. Later that afternoon, my agent calls, and they go, Dorothy's like, they love them. Take them back tomorrow. They're cutting the field down to 50. Rodney goes yep. in number one. And my mom said they laughed him out of the place. They were like, she said, whatever he did, it was spot on. Take him back. My mom's like, oh, this is crazy. So take me back. I go in first, and there are more casting people. Another hamburger's waiting for me. And they're like, hey, Rodney, look, that's for you. And I'm like, for me? And they're like, that's for you. I'm like, can I ever buy Oh, Go ahead. I tear into this burger. They start laughing. They're like, get his mom in here. So they call my mom in, and my mom's like, you know, what's going on? Like, why did they come get me? You know, like, oh, this has got to be bad. Mm -hmm. That's a mother for you. Yeah. And they were like, he's our guy. And my mom's like, wait a minute. What about all these other people out here? And he's like, don't worry about it, Miss Rippy. He goes to the door and goes, hey, everybody, we're so sorry. Casting's closed. Thank you for coming in, everybody. Wow, I've never heard of that before. Oh. That's amazing. Closed casting down. There's this whole, I mean, no, they didn't even see him. Yeah. There's this whole entourage of people leaving, mad, parents stomping, kids crying. And my mom's like, now what? They're like, oh, that's it. So, lo and behold, that audition, if you go to YouTube and you type in Rodney Allen Rippey, Jumbo Jack, you'll actually see the audition, which became the first commercial. Oh, that's cool. They never touched it. Really? So, they, you, in matter of fact, they shot it on like a little 8 millimeter. So, camera. they took that actual stuff and used it for the commercial. That was the first. Because it was first. so good. That was it. That's an amazing story. I've, I've never really heard of that happening. And uh, that's a national spot. 
Yeah, and this is when, back in those days, when national commercials were national. You had uh, ABC, NBC, and CBS. You didn't have all the other channels. No. Nope. Um, so it meant, well, you're going to play national. You're going to play it, and you're going to get money for it. It's really good. It did, you know, it did what it was supposed to do for yeah. that era. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it, something like that now would be fifteen million dollars. Right. No, it's different. I, I did mean, a, I did a McDonald's one. and it ran a month, and then I did another one for another month. And yeah. They would only run thirty days, and then they switch them out. Yeah. And I've had national, but I've had nationals like Irish Spring Soap run a year and a half. Now nice. you never know what's going to happen. And you hear these people, they all made $100,000. I said, well, I, I made eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but you talk about, you know, the, the way the industry has shifted. Yeah. You know, I talk to people all the time about the industry. And I'm like, look, 72, 2017. I'm mm -hmm. like, were professional athletes getting 30 and $40 million contracts? New, no. You know, back in the day, and a professional, you know, football player might have got 80, you mm -hmm. know. So you see how the scale has jumped over yeah. the years, and so. Yeah. But I'm very thankful. I mean, the people that I met, Mike Douglas, Dinah Shore, Murray yeah, Griffin, met John yeah. Carson, um, you know, work with greats. So, um, Mel and Brooks. Met, and you met Rick Grayson. And, and Rick Grayson. That's <laughs> it. The man. The the, the, the muscle. Do you even remember coming out on stage with us, or are you too young? I remember. Man, I remember all of these things. I mean, so it, and your, it's really crazy. I remember the very first audition. Yeah. Like it was yesterday. Was it like weird walking out with two bodybuilders? It was always I. You know what? I remember. I remember doing the six million dollar man, and I saw you guys. I'm like, wow, look at their muscles, you know. And I was, yeah. you know, I was really. Oh, that's funny. I was really taken by that because you guys are, are, reminded me of uh, like a superhero. So that was it. Back then, basically, there was only a handful of us that were. I mean, no one really understood what that's, this all meant. Yeah. So we got all that type of work that you saw us do, and it was fun. I mean. We did pretty well with it. I'm sure. There's only 12 of us around, basically, 12 guys. Wow. Now there's wow. like 12,000. Yeah. So as you grew up, did you stay in the industry? I did. You know, I've worked for several major media outlets. I worked for ABC here in Los Angeles, local. Worked for a couple of um, major radio outlets. I worked for Westwood One, big radio outfit, mm -hmm. um, KFWB. And, mm -hmm. and so I went to school, went to college. And, uh, well, backing up, I've got to regress <clears throat> a little bit. So... After my career, you know, I really peaked, you know, when I was around 12. And then all of a sudden, one day, my mom said, hey, to my dad, why don't we move to North Carolina? And we didn't know, but my mom was sick. Mm -hmm. So we moved to North Carolina. So I was there from 1980 to 88, went to high school there. And after I got out of high school, I told my dad, my mom, had, and then in 85, my mom passed away. So... I was kind of really heartbroken. Sure. So I said, you know, I wanted to make sure Pop was okay. He was solid. And I said, I'm going to go back to California and go to college. And came back, got my degree in marketing and advertising, started my own company, RIP Marketing Group. Um, started my own independent video production company, RER Entertainment. And um, worked you know, on behind the scenes and red carpets and shot a couple commercials and you know, and, and just got in the thick of production, and now I'm, I, I've am i co-executive produced a, a country artist, uh, I'd mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. his name's Ben Rombouts, and so we did a song dedicated to the men and women of the armed services mm -hmm. called 21 Days. Yeah, give me the DVD. Yeah, CD, yeah, right CD right yeah, you go. CD record. 21 Days. And uh, right now, I'm, I'm co-executive producer of the Country Soul Music Awards, and that's going to be a new award show, like the CMAs. But yeah. Is going to focus on the soulful side of country. Yeah. So you got oh, people cool. like Ray Charles and oh, cool. Ronnie Millsap and Why Don't Judd. So all those people are country soul singers. Mm -hmm. People don't really know the delineation, but you're really getting knowledgeable about that. And um, you know, been very fortunate to work with great organizations: American Cancer Society, Muscular Dystrophy, uh, Special Olympics. Um, been really involved with a lot of things, and now I'm celebrity spokesperson for. An organization called Prime Motivation and you know all throughout the United States how they've taken all of the vocational training out yeah. of the schools yeah. no home ec no woodworking no car shops nothing and the kids nowadays don't have the vocational skills that they need and it's people like great people like Mike Rowe you know he's out there he's a champion for vocational training and what we do we go into the schools do these major assemblies bring in huge sponsors rev the kids up and show them the possibilities of 
uh, you know, vocational things that they can make a solid living at. Well, when I was in high school, I mean, back in those days, we had wood shop, metal shop. That's right. We had auto shop. We could bring our cars in and work on them. That's right. And uh, that's how you learn how to do stuff. Yes, sir. It was definitely a plus. Yeah. But they take that away from you, and then the kids today, they don't even know how to turn a screwdriver or something. It, and it's it's very serious. And I mean, it, and they're saying, you know, statistics are saying that the people who really do the the, the, the heavy work, I mean, the, the hands-on things that, you know, that machines can't do, mm-hmm. it takes a finesse, and it takes engineering, it takes creativity, right. and um, that's what Prime Motivation is all about. And, and, it, and it takes thought, because if you, it doesn't work one way, you got to come up with a solution to do it the other way. Yes, sir. And yes, a sir. machine can't do that. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think that's a great thing to do. What, tell me a little bit about this radio thing you want to do. You know what? Uh, a colleague of mine, he was... Uh, Big guy over at Clear Channel Radio, which mm-hmm. is now iHeart, and he always wanted to do something that would help break young people into broadcast. Mm-hmm. So we started the Teen Day Broadcasting Program, where we actually train young people at a community level uh, the mechanics of broadcast. And we take them through everything from engineering to on the, being on the microphone. There's certain kids that say, "I don't want to be on the microphone. I want to be the guy that runs all the." Oh, it's a lot better. So. We, we teach them all of the components and we create a career path for young people through high schools and so we've been very fortunate to have it at like youth centers and our ultimate goal is to bring online uh, a lot of the LA Unified School District schools so that they can have a radio station. Oh, great idea. And, and so they can all tie together. Yeah. We'll be master control. So these are things that are in the works. Right now we have a group in Austin, Texas, a, a young man, uh, uh, Ajante and his mom, uh, uh, Robin, and they're in Austin. We have a group uh, from Leadership Connection back in um, Greensboro, North Carolina, and we have a group up in, um, uh, up in uh, Wisconsin. And so we're, you know, we actually are building our network. And once we pull the switch on KTDN uh, here in Los Angeles, we'll be live, and then we'll just we'll just switch them in and give them uh, orders, marketing orders. This is orders. a nice project. Yes, sir. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, and yeah. There's, and there's so many ways you can go with it. Mm-hmm. It's just getting the ball rolling, getting it started, and getting it out there so that you can air it. You know, I'd like to take this show and go live once a week where I could have call-ins. And it can be done. You can do it. Yeah. I just have to figure out the format and how to do it because there's certain key things that you have to do, and I just have to mm-hmm. find them out, and then I will do it. That way you guys can call in and ask questions and be on the air for, you know, I pick a day a week, like maybe 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock on a Friday yeah. for a live show. Yeah. You know? That, hey, you know, that's one of the things that we're doing with KTDN. We really want to bridge young people to talk to other young people around the world, mm-hmm. literally to break down these walls. It's madness that our world is so dysfunctional and there's people who are like, well, I don't know anything about these people, but what I've heard, they're supposed to be this way. And, and really, instead of letting young people talk to young people about things that they live and, and know, you know, that's what we want. We don't, we don't want to have adults in the middle of this thing. We really want the young people to run it. No, I noticed that um, if I go to my doctor over the hill and I get in the elevator, I always talk to people in the elevators. Sure. And my girlfriend kind of laughs at me. She says, you'll just talk to anybody and make them laugh. I said, that's just what I do. And then three or four people will chime in, and you see those that just kind of look around. They just won't talk. They're all bottled up. Yeah. And it's sad because the world is, you know, you, you need to connect with people. That's right. And this is my connection to the fans out there. And, and you know, I just don't want to talk about bodybuilding and weightlifting all the time. I know it's what you guys like. But when you have somebody like Rodney, who's really helping kids around the world and doing what he's doing, built on his name, from, from doing all the commercials, I said, this is a good thing. It's, it's passing it forward or paying it forward. Yeah. And this is what we need in this world to, to give to other people and other kids. Yeah, so I, they grow to be good adults, and you know, and and you're also interesting too because you're about fitness, and, and you got to have a great diet in order to fuel it. You know, I do. I mean, it's fitness and, and lifting and wrestling and all that, and that's just a piece of me. But the the more yeah. me goes a lot deeper, and it's motivation and dealing with people and trying to get people to feel good about themselves that have low self-esteem and right. I'll sit and work with them um, and kids too who I have in the wrestling ring out there and they want to be wrestlers but they're shy and this brings out their personalities. I tell them wrestling is not about hurting each other, it's about working together as a team yeah. and projecting yourself to the audience and getting them to like you and all of a sudden their personalities come up and I've had parents tell me ever since my kids worked with you, as grades came up. It's awesome. It's a good feeling. 
Yep. You know, even even fitness and bodybuilding, what it is. I, I mean, years ago, people say bodybuilding is stare in the mirror and look at flex muscles. It's not true. It's a it's a mind thing. And even Schwarzenegger will admit, mm -hmm. bodybuilding put him on the map for what he did, and then the film and TV. And as a governor, he used that mental discipline to take it to something else. That's right. Because you have to have discipline. And, and it's not easy to to you know. That's the thing about. I've always admired bodybuilders because I'm like, this is not something you can start in a day and you're like, oh man, I feel no. tight. And this is like a regiment. It's a life process. It's a lifetime. Rodney brought me a little cup. It says, take life a little easier, which I believe I'm doing. That's right. <laughs> and it's got a little picture of him on the back. There you go. It's really kind of cute. And there's a keychain. There you go. With Rodney, yesterday. There you go. And today. What a great idea. <laughs> and then I got a picture of him and he's like, this is now. <laughs> Not really. There you go. <laughs> so I think that's really nice. I'm really happy to have you here. And um, once we close this out, we'll talk further about some projects. Sounds great, man. But I want you guys to see Rodney after all these years because his face was everywhere. In fact, he couldn't get away with anything. I didn't tell on him. There you go. It's all good. It's all good. Yep. Thank you, Rodney, so much. Rick, thank you, man, for having me on. Thank man. you guys for watching Rick's Corner. I always bring interesting people on like Rodney. And it's what makes the world go around because we have to expand our knowledge of what's out there. Not just inside the gym, but outside the gym. And so it's all good. I'll see you guys next time. It's rickdrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.